Tylenol versus Advil Battle Royale today. Okay, well, we really should say acetaminophen versus ibuprofen. Okay. You don't want to use the fancy names. The fancy, not the generic versus trade names. Right. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Bradwin. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. We get asked this all the time, or I all see patients, I'll ask them, so are you taking any anti-inflammatories? And I'll say, yeah, I'm taking Tylenol. Yep. So people get these mixed up all the time, but they could they be any more different, these two drugs? Well, yes, yeah, I think they could be, actually, but they're... They are different, okay. and I'd say one's better and one's safer. There's a whole bunch of pros and cons, and we're going to kind of break them down yeah. top to bottom. Oh, mom, one might work for one person, one might work for another. Okay. Leave a comment what you prefer. If you tried one, if you tried both, if they work, if they don't work, leave okay. a comment. Tylenol versus Advil. Okay. Break so, it down. So let's start at the beginning. What about the class of medication that they are? Okay, so Tylenol is acetaminophen, which yes. is, I think, a class of its own. It's okay. also called paracetamol, I think, in Europe. In the United Kingdom, yeah. Um, but mostly known as Tylenol around the world, I think, or paracetamol. Right. Um, and it is an antipyretic. Yes. So it, so it reduces, reduces fever. fever. Uh, analgesic. Reduces, so it reduces pain. pain. And it's central acting. Right. So it doesn't act. Well, no, we're not to mechanism yet. We're just a class. Oh, sorry. Why? Right, jumped ahead. It's in a class of its own. Class okay, of its own. Acetaminophen. Okay, versus ibuprofen and Advil, which is a... Non-steroidal anti anti-inflammatory. Yeah, and the reason we call things non-steroidal anti-inflammatory is because the classic class of anti-inflammatories is a steroid, okay? Right. Like a prednisone or yeah. something like that. That's a powerful anti-inflammatory, but then this class is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, meaning it's an anti-inflammatory, but it's not a steroid. Right, and what we would say is that it is an analgesic. analgesic. It, pain. it does. It, is an, it does reduce fever, so it's an antipyretic. Yeah. Yes. However, it, it is its own class, and said non-steroidal right. anti-inflammatory is its own class with a bunch of medications in that class. Right. You can have naproxen in that class. You can have diclofenac, Celebrex. Yeah, all the, of them. There's a bunch of different yeah. types of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. We're just, we just picked Advil or ibuprofen to start with. Right, so they both reduce pain, they both reduce fever, only one of them reduces inflammation. Take a guess. <laughs> The anti-inflammatory reduces inflammation, yes. the non-steroidal. I think that's, a lot of people don't know that. I think like sometimes patients are like, oh, yeah, you know, I feel inflamed or whatever, and they're like, Fair. I take Tylenol. Now, okay, so we're, we're talking generally because yeah. acetaminophen might have a little bit of anti-inflammatory processes that's going on. That's what we're, there's some research going on into that now. Sure. But generally, the acetaminophen is not an anti-inflammatory. It doesn't do anything for inflammation, whereas the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, whole gig is to reduce inflammation. Okay, so you're talking before the mechanism. What's the mechanism of action of acetaminophen? So acetaminophen is central acting, so it acts mostly on the brain as, yep. a ro as opposed to the peripheral tissues like muscles, joints. Nerves. Yeah, it's not like an acetaminophen receptor. Yeah, yeah. for example. Uh, and, and, through, and it's central acting. I mean, do we know really? It's really prostaglandins in the brain. Yep. As the, it's, uh, it's kind of unknown a little bit. Yeah, it's a little just bit. It's kind of weird, but it's yeah, so common. Right? So How does this work? We don't know. It just works. Just take it. Works. Yeah, <laughs> but I think this. it's got to do with some prostaglandin synthesis inhibition in the brain, perhaps. Don't yeah. quote me on Maybe that Maybe some COX-1, they said. <clears throat> um, and then for, for non steroidal anti-inflammatories. Well known. Well known. It, it, it does in, inhibit prostaglandin synthesis throughout the body. Yeah. And prostaglandin synthesis is one of the steps in the inflammatory pathway. It right. leads to redness, pain, swelling. Right, and particularly the COX-1 and the COX-2s, and then they started to work to make them more specific, just either, yes. to, to reduce some of the side effects. Right, then you'll have some more COX-2 specific ones in the more recent anti-inflammatories. Right, okay, so let's go to uses. So when okay. people are thinking, I have this problem, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try Tylenol or acetaminophen, what kind of problems are we thinking about? So I think, Generally, and there's a lot of overlap in these yeah. uses, but generally if you're thinking about like headaches, yep. those kind of pains, that's yeah. more of a the Tylenol. Pains. Whereas your musculoskeletal pains, you're more thinking of an anti-inflammatory in general, yeah. but there's a ton of overlap. Right, but you two. got like a swollen ankle because you sprained your ankle yeah. or you have arthritis, you're probably thinking more on the inflammatory, anti-inflammatory side. Totally agree. However, and postoperatively, we do prescribe both actually. Right, and we've acetaminophen. talked about this before yeah. multimodal treatment. Yeah, multimodal. We use acetaminophen and a non steroidal anti inflammatory, yeah. at least for a short period of time yeah. after. And now we, there's the, the, the combo Jesus. Combo, there's preparations with yeah. both of them mixed together. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about how long it takes for the normal. Well, someone might say, oh, well, there's Tylenol arthritis. What's the deal with that? Well, you just learned me. <laughs> that basically is still acetaminophen, just rebranded and remarketed in a different way. Maybe yeah. there's like a slow release component to it or something like that. But right. at the end of the day, Tylenol arthritis is still your same Tylenol that you're taking. Right. 
oh, your same acetaminophen or paracetamol that you're taking. Right. Okay. Uh, time to work. Who's gonna, which one's going to work faster? Okay. So acetaminophen probably has a quicker, yeah, a like, little bit. Mm-hmm. Half, within 30 minutes, I think, is the idea with acetaminophen, whereas 30 to 60 minutes, I think, is more of your non anti-inflammatory. Yes. Okay. That might be by way of just being central acting. Yeah. Probably still not the best reason to, to choose it, but no. whatever. Um, duration of action, does one work longer than the other? And I think all of them have longer preparations. Yes. Yeah, you can get longer preparations. But in general, your yeah. acetaminophen is every four to six hours you're going to take it, yep. whereas your non is going to be more like six to eight hours. Right. And dosing, obviously, is very specific for each of them uh, related to your weight and your other comorbid disease potentially. Right. So that leads us in, let's talk about risk. We did separate videos about each of these on the we risk have. because there are so yeah. many of them. We have, and I think, I think this, the risk profile favors one of these much more than the other. Yeah, I would, I, agree. Would say. I would agree. I would say that acetaminophen, Tylenol or paracetamol is much safer to take right. than a non anti-inflammatory like Advil, Aleve or naproxen or ibuprofen or diclofenac or Celebrex or something like that. It's a long list. Reason being, because of the way, one of the main reasons why there's such a difference in the risk profile is the way they are excreted or got your body gets rid of them, right? Yep. Generally, your body gets rid of stuff using your liver or your kidneys or a combination of both. In this way, it's easy to remember acetaminophen is liver, non anti-inflammatory is kidney. Yeah. Okay. So the damage that can be done by these drugs is by way of how they're excreted. Yeah. So long-term use of acetaminophen, maybe even not that long-term use, but overuse or abuse will lead to hepatotoxicity or liver damage. Yeah. Whereas the anti-inflammatory use, long-term use, maybe even not that long-term use, can lead to renal damage. Renal damage. Kidney failure. Yeah. Okay. And now the non anti-inflammatories also affect many other systems yeah, in your body. Yeah, for them. Okay. Yeah. So kidney damage, and that's manifest. That's manifest as like giving you kidney problems, hypertension, yep. right, as a result of kidney damage. It can affect your cardiovascular system. Heart attack, so stroke, damage to your cardiovascular system, and stroke as well. And the other big one with the non anti-inflammatory is your gastrointestinal tract or your GI tract, because it can, by way of its mechanism of action, lead to the development of ulcers. Yep. Hole yeah. in the lining of your stomach. Yeah, or in you got, stomach. yeah you get an yeah. ulcer. Uh, and that obviously can be fatal. Right. Um, so you're affecting a lot more organ systems with the non anti inflammatory. So at the end of the day, acetaminophen is probably much safer, has a much better risk benefit profile than the non anti inflammatory. However, they both have a role. Agreed. For me, if you are taking acetaminophen, careful with your alcohol consumption, careful if you have pre existing liver disease, that's kind of the group that needs to be careful. Because our body has an inherent amount of ability to process this, and if it gets overwhelmed by multiple different things being processed by it, that's yeah. what can lead to problems. And same thing for your kidney. If you are taking this and you have other medical problems, your family doctor certainly should be at least aware that you're taking it, first of all, especially over the counter stuff, and making sure that your kidney function is all right. Right. And, and because it affects so many organ systems, the non anti inflammatories can interact with many different medications. Right. We didn't even mention the hematologic implications of non anti inflammatories because they do inhibit platelet synthesis or platelet yep. function, which means you can bleed easier when you take a non anti inflammatory. So you might even notice you get nosebleeds after taking them for a while, or you bruise super easy if you're yeah, on you an anti inflammatory. Bang your leg on the chair, boom, big bruise. All of a sudden, a big bruise. Right? And so, therefore, if you're on some other form of blood thinner, there's going to be an interaction with the non anti-inflammatory, yep. big time. Okay. Um, special groups. So what about in pregnancy? So say you're pregnant, mm-hmm. you got a headache. Okay, I'm pregnant, I got a headache. Okay. I, that's, prob- that's the least of my problems if <laughs> I'm pregnant, but yeah, okay. Fair, fair, right. okay. And you're like, okay, what can I take over the counter that's safe for me and safe for my, for my baby? So generally, we try and avoid non anti-inflammatories in yeah. pregnancy, yeah. especially in the third trimester, right. whereas acetaminophen is much safer right. during pregnancy. I would say still discuss it with your doctor and definitely, definitely try to take as little as possible. Yeah, Okay. Exactly. So on, continuing on the baby theme, mm. what about for kids? For, okay, so there's pediatric dosing available for both 100%. these medications. And you definitely want to stick to the pediatric dosing if you're going to use these medications. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think they're both... There are both there are children's preparations of both of these. Yeah, it seems like for ibuprofen and Advil anti-inflammatories, they like the kids to be a little bit older, like six over six months. Yeah. Um, I, I six think, months or yeah, six, six years? months. Yeah, six months. Yeah, six months. Mostly because I think of the developing kidney. But okay. but I think generally just take it as um, recommended. Talk to your pharmacist or your doctor if you're concerned. 
Absolutely. Now you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, if you have a history of hypertension, peptic ulcer disease, sure. coronary artery disease, stroke, those kind of things, you have to be super careful with a non steroidal anti inflammatory. You've probably been told, many of you have probably been told by yes. your doctor, don't take NSAIDs yeah. for, because of certain conditions you have. It's very, very, very less likely that your doctor has told you don't take acetaminophen. Agreed. However, we were surprised when we did our video about the side effects sure. of Tylenol and acetaminophen. I, I thought it was way safer than it was. So yeah. I, I backed off on my push no. for that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And now let's specifically talk about us. We're orthopedic surgeons. We see people with arthritis all the time. What does the research say about yeah. controlling pain related to arthritis with these two classes of medications? Is one better than the other? Generally, the well, we've always thought that the anti-inflammatory is better than yeah. the acetaminophen for controlling pain. Yeah. Um, however, uh, there's a lot of different working groups that do recommend starting with acetaminophen. Right, uh, but not because it's better. No, because it's, it's safer. safer. Yeah. yeah, so I'd say generally speaking, I think most of the data would be in agreement saying that anti-inflammatories reduce pain in a more effective way, mm -hmm. but at a significant cost. And now what's interesting too about the anti-inflammatories is that they all work about the same. A lot of people think, well, I'm getting a prescription yeah. one, or this one's more expensive, or this one is reduces my side effects. Often the side effect profile has changed, but the efficacy has actually not mm. changed from whether, like Advil, ibuprofen, you know, Aleve, Naproxen, Celebrex, they all actually have about the same efficacy for reducing yeah. pain. Yeah, they all sort of following the same path. Yeah. Do you take, can you take an anti-inflammatory? Can I? Did you, you say? Yeah. So I, I can, I don't, I'd say. Well, Generally, I try to avoid them. Even with my stupid Achilles tendonitis that I have from stupid pickleball. Right, I, right. I don't take them. No. no. Yeah, no. I've tried, uh, I mean, I can only take it one or two days in a row. And oh, no, I'm start upset, it's always stomach. Oh, you get like reflux. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. start to bleed or anything like that, but it sure. shuts myself. The other thing to consider is a topical. Topical yes. anti-inflammatories can be as effective as oral anti-inflammatories and are much, much safer. There you go. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, forward it to someone that maybe you think would be benefited by knowing this stuff. You might have known this already, you may not have, but like yeah. here talking with docs, there's no question that's too silly to ask. There you go. That was the question we wanted to answer today. Nice. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. I'll see you next time.